Hey, it's some old guy quoting you again. Uh, so, sorry for uh, the, the startup video there. The <laughs> I wanted to be a little dramatic on this one because I've been working on this one for a long time. So how the heck did I make that video out front? And it's very reproducible and it's programmable and all that good stuff. Uh, you, of course, you could move the z-axis or the I mean the the, uh, the mostly printed CNC machine. You could move it using the uh, joystick and a 32-bit version of ESTL cam. But uh, I wanted something that was repeatable, programmable. Um, so I wrote some software to do this, and I have a special uh, um, fourth axis here. Probably not the fourth axis you were thinking of as the uh, beginning of the video goes. <coughs> This is it right here. It's got a mount on the bottom here for a, a webcam or a, a, any sort of camera you want to put on there that uh, has to be kind of small. You know, it's a tight space. Um, the mount, uh, it's got a, uh, a short body stepper motor here that's connected to the fourth axis. i got to do some cable management here, obviously. And then, of course, the, uh, the wire for the... Uh, uh, webcam comes up and kind of has a holding spot up on top here and a shield to keep it from getting caught in the gear. So this this assembly here is basically um, based off of the uh, the Wade extruder um, that I found on Thingiverse and modified to uh, to fit my needs to hold that motor in there and uh, uh, the standard size stepper uh, 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 standard size extruder gears for for the Wade's uh, extruder and all it does is just turns the camera instead of extruding. And uh, like I said, it's just con connected to the fourth axis here. So I've been working on this thing for months. The software's kind of been a bugger uh, here and there. And uh, what I imagined is maybe some more interesting videos. We could do some interesting things with, uh, with this camera, I think. And, uh, spice up uh, some of the, the demo videos that I do. And heck, if you've got a mostly printed CNC machine, you can use it for other things. Um, Brian was mentioning that, I think, in his video with, uh, 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 there was an interview, if you haven't heard that one, certainly go out and listen to it, but, I mean, he's, uh, as Ryan said, the, uh, um, mostly printed CNC machine is a great platform for other applications, and this is another application, uh, it's basically a, a motion-controlled camera, you know, you could, like they used to make the old movies out of before, <laughs> before uh, everything was uh, uh, computer graphics, right? So you know, put the spaceship up there and you fly the camera by it. Now if we just had two of these guys face to face upside, one upside and one downside, you could have one driving your spaceship and the other one driving the camera and that would be really cool. But, you know, <laughs> if you really wanted to do that. But this gives us a step into that uh, motion controlled uh, camera sort of thing. So I think it's really cool. Uh, I've been working on it for a long time, uh, several months. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'll put the link to the parts up there, and I'll put this on Thingiverse, and the software will be up on my web page. And uh, so let's go take a look at that software real quick, and I'll give you a quick run through on that. If you have any questions, demos, or features you'd like to discuss or add, I'll I'll certainly take them under consideration. How about that? All right. So I wanted to show you the software I wrote to uh, generate that piece of G code that moves the camera around. And it's called the Mostly Printed CNC Motion Controller. So uh, here we have the representation of your uh, uh, workspace. Uh, the length, the uh, width, the height, 
and that's all set over here in workspace size this is uh, the size of my workspace and all these values once you set them it remembers them uh, so feel free to adjust that to whatever your workspace is um, the this item in the middle here is uh, what I call the target this represents the thing it's kind of a placeholder for you to uh, use to focus on when you're working your uh, path here. For instance, uh, I had something in the center that I wanted to circle around, so I put the target in the center. And uh, here's the size of the target. Um, you can set that to whatever you want, and uh, also the location of the target. And all the target does is just a, a placeholder for you to look at while you're setting up your path. Uh, it doesn't add anything to the to the G code. Um, this thing here is the feed rate, of course, <clears throat> and it's in millimeters per minute, uh, just like uh, uh, Marlin likes it. Um, of course, whatever you set in here, you can still adjust if you have the graphic display, and that's uh, what I did downstairs. Um, a slower speed rate, uh, lower, slower feed rate, I should say, is um, better for your webcam or whatever camera. If it's got autofocus, it gives it time to autofocus if you go really, really slow. Uh, I ran at 20% of this, so it would be uh, what 400 uh, uh, millimeters per minute on the front uh, video of this uh, episode. So uh, I cranked it right, right down there, and uh, it worked out a lot nicer than having it swing around at uh, you know, 2,000 inches per of uh, millimeters per minute. <clears throat> um, this is the degree of rotation on the fourth axis. Uh, uh, this is the value that get, gets fed to that fourth axis in uh, millimeters actually uh, to tell it how, how far to rotate for each degree. Um, I can show you how to tune this in. A look from the front video that uh, I still didn't need a little bit more tuning to do on that. Um, we'll take a look at uh, the how to uh, how to tweak that later uh, of course we have the uh, new uh, button which uh, loads up a new um, environment here uh, we can load files we can save files and of course we can save the G code the load and save uh, save a file that's uh, a dot uh, uh, MPC and CMP for MPC and C motion controller just so you can uh, note, note those different from all the others and um, <clears throat> so let's take a look at this a little bit more. And besides that, we have uh, six um, uh, points that we can uh, move around here and set as uh, points in our path. And we have uh, six control boxes over here, one for each one of those points. So let's load up an example. Let me load up the close circle I used here. Uh, a couple more things about the uh, workspace here. Uh, if you just want to look at things, you can certainly use these buttons down here to rotate around if you're wondering if something's going outside the uh, display box or the, the uh, outside your workspace. You can take a look at uh, different angles. You can crank it around in many different ways here. And uh, once you're happy looking at it, just go ahead and hit that home button. It'll take it right back. There's another way to move too. And if you're moving in the um, if you're moving in the Y axis, you don't want to use these guys. You want to move it this way. So I'm using my right mouse button and dragging, and then I'm going to use the center mouse wheel and uh, holding that down and drag um, just to get a little bit more perspective on it. And this makes it easier to handle uh, or grab this um, axis. Um, so you can grab uh, a point by, uh, well not the first one there, that's kind of fixed in, in place uh, really. I like to keep my first point as zero, 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 just so I have a good reference on where to, where to drop that guy, where to start my head at. And each one of these little, we'll call them um, um, nodes, has an indicator showing which direction that camera is pointing at this point in the node. We'll, we'll take a look at that too. So, for instance, if you want to grab a node, you can just click on it, and we can move this guy around in three dimensions, and if we want to, we can scroll back here a little bit, move it in the z-axis here a little bit. So, <clears throat> it's as easy as that. Um, you have to be kind of accurate when you click on, uh, click on these uh, arrows. If you click a little bit off, it's not, it's going to unselect. Uh, I'd like to have a little bigger, um, 
pad around that, but uh, it's a third party uh, package that I uh, bought to uh, use on this project. So uh, without digging into that, I, I don't have a lot of control. Before we move on, um, you can see one of the warnings that comes up here uh, indicating that your path is going out of your uh, um, workspace. And let's take a look at that. We'll just kind of we'll scroll down here, roll down. And we should be able to actually see where that uh, is happening. Oops, let's go up. It's saying Y size is greater than uh, X size. So here you can see we're actually accidentally moved that outside of the uh, outside of the um, workspace there. So once you move it back in, it's fine. You can also select multiples of these if you want to move them around as a group in any direction, just like that. Um, currently I don't have feedback on which one's selected over here, that's why we have the different colors. I'll be working on that if this uh, turns out to be popular. Oh, by the way, you can scroll in with the mouse, rolling the mouse wheel. So let's go ahead and uh, grab that guy right there. And let's take a look at some of the things we can do with it. We can set absolute X, Y, and Z values. So if you'd like to type a value in there, or if you can just move it around, of course, that's a reflected um, uh, in these value in the readouts here. Uh, to point the camera, let's take a, a more of a top view on this. You can enter a value for rotation in here. And this uh, rotation value is uh, in degrees. So if you rotate it around, uh, you can see, whoops, let me unclick. You can see this little uh, indicator indicating which way the point uh, camera is pointing. Rotate right around, or you can enter a, a value. So the initial value, as you can see here, is set to a value of zero rotation. Um, it indicates on the screen here where you need to have the camera rotated at. Uh, for the initial stop. So X0, Y0, Z0, and R0 is pointing straight back. So we've got that. Um, this uh, little readout here tells you what, how long it thinks that path is. And of course we've already looked at the status line here. This slider is a little bit different though. It allows you to come down and uh, Basically, it's a roundness, or, or I think like to think of it as a pressure inside that hose that's being represented on the screen. So you can crank it up or crank it down as you see fit. And crank that next one down and make all nice square angles for our path, if you wish. Well, it's totally up to you. So uh, let's see, we've looked at new, we've looked at load, save, you just basically uh, ask you what the file name is every time. And uh, those are in native dialog boxes for Windows and Mac, which is really nice. Um, I spent a little money on that one, so if you can help out, if you like the software, if you can donate a little bit, that'd be wonderful. Um, <clears throat> it was one of the packages on Unity, you can go out there and take a look at it if you'd like. Uh, also, then we have the save the g-code. So, uh, a little information up front. Absolute positioning. And each one of these segments is represented by 20 uh, different codes, different uh, movement commands here, as you can see. It uh, blindly sets in whatever feed rate you've set. Uh, so, if you exceed your z-axis or your uh, uh, fourth axis, uh, of course, you'll have to uh, recode. It won't warn you about that. I initially had it doing that sort of thing, but uh, it was causing some other issues, so I pulled that feature out. I'll revisit that in the future. But there you have it. Just uh, load this onto your uh, mostly printed CNC machine just like you would any other piece of G-code and position uh, the head at 000 with the camera pointing towards uh, the back of the machine, and uh, you're good to go. If you have any other questions or something else, uh, a feature you, you'd like, uh, I will certainly take it under consideration. Uh, give me a holler. This will uh, run on uh, Windows or Mac. I've got both. I'll put both versions up on my website for you to download. Have fun. Let's see what kind of videos you can make with this.
Hey guys, just one more thing I wanted to mention that, uh, you know, while Unity software is free, the assets from the asset store often are not, and I probably got almost $100 of 30-party assets in this program, so if you uh, like this video, if you like the program, please consider supporting me on patreon.com slash some old guy coding. I really appreciate it.